what is going on beautiful beings and conscious co-creators welcome or welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for watching tuning in and clicking that button today's video is going to be a pick a card okay and I know it doesn't look like it right now I'll explain but today's video is a pick a card and we are discussing how you appear to others how you come across to others what are other people's perception of you uh, in the name of self-reflection and trying to understand yourself and discover yourself, learn more about yourself, one of the things that shouldn't be overlooked if you plan on having relationships, platonic, romantic, and otherwise, uh, one of the things that should not be overlooked um, is the perception, how people perceive you. You want to try to understand as much as you can about that so you can always understand and control um, the narrative. Um, not so much in the name of like trying to, you know, if you're a celebrity trying to control what people say, you can't control what people say or think about you. However, you can utilize that to your benefit the more aware you come, you are. Like if you know, if you realize like, hey, a lot of people perceive me as being this mean person even though I don't feel like I am like that's something that I want to help you understand or come across or examine this is something that I found super helpful in my journey of trying to learn myself more um, this is something that I feel other people around me have told me has helped them is learning how other people perceive them learning how they come across even when they don't mean to whether it's intentional or not just being aware of that is a practice that I want to um, encourage some of you guys who are interested in you know the whole concept of reflect um, to start dabbling in if you haven't already. So that is what today's reading is about. Um, hopefully you learned something, um, but if that is something that you're interested in, then definitely stay tuned. All right, guys, so before we start with the actual pick a card, I wanted to do something just a smidge different. Um, I wanted to feature a tarot deck that I have never used on my channel. It is a old new deck. I've had this deck for over a year and a half at this point I think and I am just now um, wanting to break into it and, and use it and I wanted to feature it because I will be reading from the book as I flip these cards. So this is the Hoodoo Tarot deck. So this is what the cards look like. And this is the uh, guidebook. It says the Hoodoo Tarot. This is a book written by Tayana Lee McKiller or McQuiller. I am so sorry if I mispronounced any part of that. <laughs> and the artwork is by Caitlin V. Foisey. And this is a 78 card deck and book for root workers. If you guys are subscribers of mine you already know how I get down I don't really do the whole title thing but I am very um, active in my spiritual journey and my spiritual walk and my belief systems no they do not have to look a certain way to anybody and I would encourage you guys to also um, accept that fact that it doesn't need to be boxed into something so no I don't refer to myself as a witch Hell, I don't even refer to myself as a practitioner anymore because I just don't like titles. I do what I do and I mind my business. But I am teaching you guys and I am kind of putting myself on a platform of explaining certain things. So I will I will indulge in that aspect. But when it comes to like regular real life, like I, I do what I do and I mind my business. <laughs> and uh, so anyway... Um, uh, but yes, hoodoo is something, the practice itself is something that I am um, very well familiar with. And um, I just really wanted to uh, start using this deck. It was calling to me and I, I don't force it. That's why I've had this deck for so long and never used it because I let things occur naturally and I've just been called to start using it. So that's what we're doing today and I'm excited. So I wanted to feature this deck. If you're interested in this, I did buy this on Amazon again that year or so ago. So if you're interested... Um, hit up Amazon and just type in the Hoodoo Tarot. I think it's the only, where at the time that I'm recording this, this is the only deck that is like this of the, of its kind. So um, 
yeah, definitely, at least for collector's sake, uh, something that maybe you guys may be interested in grabbing. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with the pick a card. All right, what's going on, beautiful beings? We are back, and now we're ready to pick our card. So I have three different symbols to represent three different groups uh, for three different readings, okay? If you're not familiar with... If I could stop hitting my mic. If you're not familiar with the pick a card um, in general, or at least the way that I run mine, um, I basically just, you know, lay out three symbols. It could be anything. It'll be a symbol. It'll be a card. It could be a rock, a crystal. It doesn't matter. I lay them out. You pick whichever one you want to pick. Uh, you can pick more than one. It really just whatever floats your boat is what I is what I say over here. Whatever floats your boat, I'm rocking with it. So if you want to pick one group, two group, three group, I will just say I encourage you guys to just try to be as intuitively led as you can. If that means you got to pause the video and go listen, go, go listen to some music, go meditate, uh, take a nap, get in a quiet place. I prefer my readings to be listened to when you are the least distracted, uh, just because I kind of do a lot of no fluff reads so I don't um I don't always say what you want to hear but a, a lot of times I say what needs to be said I'll say it like that so because of that you know they don't work well when you're being distracted or even worse when you are in fight or flight and ego mode it doesn't work my my readings will clash so um and there are that those few people that just don't resonate with my readings and that's totally fine I accept that there's no love loss there's a million tarot readers on this internet space so I hope and pray that you find one that vibes with you um, but if you want to go forward and select a group then um, in front of you are three different groups and these are actually three symbols or three you know things objects <laughs> that I have used in actual um, work workings that I've done so I felt like because we were featuring the root work guidebook this would be appropriate because I don't tend to throw my stuff away unless I'm done using it and so I had these kind of around my workspace so here they are being featured in today's video as well so the first one is this candle and I have not this is literally like how they look I, I didn't you know fix them up to look beautiful so this is how they look in real time y'all so group one is going to be this um, round candle with um, drippings from the work that I did uh, so that is going to be group one group two is going to be the last remaining parts of uh, some sage that's barely holding on with this uh, string but it's burnt on one side and flaking everywhere so those are the last remaining parts of that and then group three is going to be kind of the last bits of a taper candle that I used in one of my workings uh, and uh, yeah some of the wax is kind of built you know at the tip and yeah so they obviously look used they 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 do look used and um, so yeah and this is a blue candle I don't know if you can tell from the lighting but this is a blue candle and this is more of a pale pink candle and then of course that's sage so sage is sage um, so anyway I want you guys to pick your group, whatever, which, whichever one resonates with you. If you do colors and you've watched that video that I did about, you know, candle magic and colors, super, super informative uh, video uh, for anybody who's interested in learning basic, just basic, basic uh, when it comes to root work. Um, I'll link that in the description box and I'll put a little tag up there somewhere but um, if you utilize those colors and you if you'll understand like perhaps what workings I was even doing with the blue candle here uh, so anyway groups will be the timestamps of these three groups will be in the description box as always along with any other information that I feel like you need uh, if you have any questions comments or concerns I will leave my email down there just hit me up in the email and I will get back to you as soon as possible um, and without further ado I'm excited so we're just gonna go ahead and jump into this reading
right, group one, what is going on? I am here to give you your reading. Those of you guys who picked that round, pale pink, you know, circle candle, we're gonna call it a circle candle. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just jump into it. Again, we're asking what, not me saying what and stopping. Child, okay, <laughs> let me shuffle. Let me shuffle her. So again, we're asking Spirit about your appearance and how you appear to other people. What are other people's perception of you? Um, so that's what we're asking. And anything that comes forth, let it provide insight, clarity, and guidance to those that, thank you, those that chose this group, thank you. I'm not going to be too many initially. Um, okay. Let's bring out the book. I don't know how loosely or how close it and close and tight this is to uh, the traditional writer weight, but I'm going to assume it's not. But I don't know. I could stand corrected. Anyway, so we have... The nine of baskets and the seven of nine. So nine of baskets, and these are all in um, upright. So it says, so nine of baskets, this image um, shows an aerial view of nine baskets filled with a few items that represent what most human beings desire. Cash and jewels, financial security and wealth, books, um, a gator head, which is protection. Um, which also side note, um, you can actually get a gator head and put it by your front door. Um, and it's meant to cast out evil spirits and protect you from anyone trying to enter your home who means you harm. Um, it's just my belief system. So take that, take what you want from that. A uh, rabbit's foot is also in one of these baskets, which symbolizes good luck, old fashioned biscuits, and a bottle of wine, sunflowers, and a passport. Um, the meaning behind this card is um, dreams fulfilled, plenty, uh, or plentiful, um, art appreciation, wishes that come true, sensuality, uh, hitting the jackpot, uh, pampering the finer things in life, financial security, prosperity, um, attaining your heart's desire, gratitude, and making it. So what we could easily assume from that right there, as far as, um, you know, appearances, I mean, it, 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 other people probably perceive you as being someone who gets what they want. Six of nines, seven of nines, uh, someone who gets what they want, right? Um, someone who, uh, maybe gets things handed to them easy, easily doesn't necessarily mean that how you appear, or how you come off is actually true or your real life story. What I'm saying is in some way you make it look that way to them or that's how they perceive you based off of maybe their own judgments, their own experiences in life, their own current reality. This is how you present to them in their reality. Okay. And like I said, this is useful, vital information. So, okay, just going to Oops, sorry, just going to keep putting that out there. But yeah, you look like somebody who gets what they want. You look like someone who doesn't have to, have to really struggle for a lot. Things come easy, easier to you. You you look like someone who doesn't struggle, who doesn't have to struggle, who didn't have to struggle coming up. Someone who maybe had an easy life, uh, someone who's currently living the easy life. Um, and um, yeah, someone who just kind of has a lot of um, has a lot of choices. You, you have a lot of options. Um, so and and you're and you're very fulfilled you know you're, you're you're happy you seem like a happy person a happy going easy going person um and then seven of knives comes out and this card it says the images of a housewife who is cooking a meal for her husband uh, but before she serves it she must remove all of the black uh, cock feathers she placed in the soup to keep him faithful it's a common practice for women to use menstrual blood and for it's and for men to use semen for the same purpose. <laughs> 
Um, and the meanings behind this are strategic planning, sincere apology, constructive criticism, reparations, confessions, lone wolves, and turning over a new leaf. These are all, um, it's not full sentences like the meaning, they're just random meanings like um, comprised together and put in commas. But, um, but yeah, and it also, I didn't, I forgot to say the plant associated with this card is um, dogwood. And if I can, nine of baskets, the plant associated with this card was marigold. Plants are super important in root work, by the way. Um, I've never learned so much about plants as I had <laughs> uh, several years ago. So yeah, plants are important. Uh, herbs, herb, herbal knowledge is important when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to um, trying to even live life on a holistic level. Um, you'll learn more and more about herbal remedies, herbal medicines, and, al and also herbal uses when it comes to um, spiritual beliefs and quote-unquote magic, okay? We'll say it like that. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a woman cooking a meal for her husband. And uh, yeah, I've definitely, if you, <laughs> I've definitely heard of of women using um, menstrual blood in uh, in like spaghetti sauce and stuff like that too. And it's 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 said to. I'm not okay. I let's let's all be ma mature adults here. I'm in no way telling you guys to do any of these things, but. Um, I definitely heard of it being a practice back then. I don't know. It may be people still doing it now, but it, it was a practice and, and something that was kind of common to use um, uh, essence of yourself, which, you know, uh, menstrual blood is like one of the most natural essences of yourself that comes out. Um, you use essences of yourself in your work or in things that you are preparing and cooking and brewing and putting your energy into. Um, and you use that when you're trying to bring someone to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to speak too much on that, but anyway, <laughs> uh, with me looking at this and knowing what this card means, which does feel a little different than the traditional um, Rider Waite uh, with when it comes to the Seven of Swords, um, I feel like you maybe sometimes come across as uh, someone who can be a little, you know, manipulative, can kind of get their way or uses whatever they, they you, you're someone who maybe doesn't mind um, kind of going into, <laughs> how do I say that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just feel like you, you, you know, you come off like this person who gets their way, um, and you know, doesn't really kind of stop until they get what they want. And, um, you know, it, it's maybe sometimes appears to, you know, work out in your favor, but um, yeah, this card makes me feel like, you know, maybe people see you as being a little manipulative, uh, maybe kind of being a little um, like, <laughs> like you can imagine if somebody felt like you were going to do something to their food and they'd be like kind of watching you, like side eyeing you, like, you know, what's in this? Like, I don't trust it, you know, you know what I mean? And I feel like maybe some people kind of see you and feel like they have to watch you, like maybe you're not the most trustworthy person. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's actually true or, or, or a true testament of your character. But if it's not true, then again, and, and this statement resonates with you, then you again, in the name of self reflection, you need to figure out what it is that you are putting out there or causing to, to make someone feel like they have to watch you like they can't really trust you like they feel like, you know, you would kind of go, you know, to maybe in the name of integrity, <laughs> you know, you, you're, you, maybe you kind of lack integrity, maybe they feel like you lack in integrity, maybe you really do. Um, either which way, if it's not something that you find to be complimentary, if it's not something that you want to um, have people perceive you in this reality, then again, this is something to be cognizant of. So that is uh, all I'm going to read for this book. Now we're going to move on to the rest of the tarot and Oracle cards. already jumping out. So from this deck spirit, we're asking, how do other people perceive group one? How are other people perceiving this, this person that picked this? Please, 
pull out any card that is going to give us some insight, clarity, and guide, guidance into this question. Thank you. Okay, so this card says links. So we have links. And the card says, Okay, and the card says, <clears throat> so we have links and it says keeper of secrets, take time out of the world and be the observer. Nothing can deserve you when you trust your knowing. You see others' secrets and keep them sacred. It's, I cannot see, it's so dark in here. <laughs> in silence and solitude, you will find your strength. Hmm. Um, I don't know why, but I'm getting like Scorpio vibes from you guys. I'm getting like, like Virgo vibes from you guys. Who else am I getting? I'm getting like Pisces vibes from you guys. And maybe a little bit of Cancer. Okay. Um, you seem to be someone who's, who's, um, quiet for some reason though I feel like you're quiet but you're flashy like you you don't necessarily like you're not loud I don't I don't see you as being loud I don't feel like people perceive you as being loud um but I do feel like people perceive you and I feel like in some ways you're kind of misunderstood and maybe that's why you're clicking on this video to, to even try to get some kind of clarity on why people keep keep perceiving you this way but um it's really, it's really your aura, okay? You may not even really be doing anything, but people kind of perceive you as just being this like um, flashy, stuck up, spoiled brat, you know? And you're like, that's far from the truth, but it's like, you keep getting that. You keep getting that that vibe being thrown into, in your face. And um, I feel like one, it's because um, when you don't, when you walk into a room, you command a certain uh, respect, I feel. Um, people don't really try to come at you crazy. Like people that don't know you, they really don't. It's usually the people that know you and think they can get away with it. But like the people that don't know you don't really come at you crazy like that. And it's because you don't have an open opening. Um, you don't give people an opening. You don't look like an open person, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like people, you don't look like you're approachable. You don't look like someone that's like, yeah, sure. Come on in and try to, you know, whatever. Like people probably hesitate before they even want to come up to you and talk to you. And, um, and, <laughs> and I feel like because of that, it gives a lot of room for people to make their own assumptions about you because they don't really see an opening or what they do see is, not what they will get like you're not one of those what you see is what you get kind of people um but anyway i feel like you're someone who looks secretive you look like you have something to hide you look like you know <laughs> i don't know it's mysterious you look mysterious but like it's not you're not doing it on purpose it's not like you're you know, like, oh, I'm going to be a vampire today and just look like, <laughs> like, no, you're not, you're not as secretive. You're not, it's, well, you may be secretive, but I'm saying like, it's not like that you, it's not because you have anything to actually hide. It's just you're probably because you're, um, you're reserved. You're, you keep to yourself. You like to assess the situation before you put your two cents in. You like to observe what's happening around you. You're a very cautious person. You know, you're not the person that necessarily likes to have the spotlight on them. And I get it, you know, I'm very much that way myself, so I get it. And a lot of times people like that tend to be misjudged as being cocky, conceited, stuck up, 
better than bougie. I mean, any kind of word you can think of, I have been called. So look, I, I get it. <laughs> but in the name of just trying to understand this reading, I feel like that's what you're coming across as to other people is that, you know, you have something to hide, like you're, you're not open, you're not uh, forthcoming. Um, and, and there, again, I want to reiterate, this is from your reader, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I feel like the more forthcoming you are, the more they will use that against you. So I say to hell with them, continue being you, okay? No one has any, and no one has ever been, <laughs> nothing good has happened to people, nothing good happens to people who are forthcoming. In the name of just trying to prove someone wrong. Now, if you have to be forthcoming for other reasons and you feel like you have to, then fine. But just for the sake of being forthcoming, because someone doesn't like that you're not, uh-uh, nah. Not for no names. We don't do that. <laughs> Oh, what about in this deck, Spirit? What about in this deck for group one? What do we have for them? Thank you. Two cards came out for you. Ashe, Ashe. Wishbone and feathers. Wishbone and feathers. Right, so we have wishbone and feathers. So I'm looking at wishbone and I'm kind of seeing you appear to be someone who is um, kind of fortunate, blessed, lucky. Again, you keep giving this vibe to people that you don't really work hard for what you have. Again, doesn't matter whether you did or not. I'm saying this is what they see. They feel like you don't really work hard. Stuff doesn't come hard for you. Like things come easy to you. You just have this like, general luck about yourself or you find yourself in very privileged blessed situations again what even if that's true it's it <laughs> again i don't know why i feel the need to say this someone apparently needs to hear this because i'm actually getting annoyed my damn self from even having to continue to say this but um do not apologize for the blessings that you have do not ever 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 in your natural life apologize for the blessings that you have, for the things that you have reaped. You people do not understand a lot of times the things that we go through now in our in our reality now, but also people don't consider the karmic blessings that are that are supposed to be showered on you in this lifetime. We don't consider previous lifetimes, previous experiences, memories. Um, we, we don't understand karmic buildup. We don't get it. We don't understand law of attraction and manifestation. And so to me, because there's so many things that we don't understand just from simply looking at a person or for simply interacting with a person once or twice, to, to, to apologize to someone who's judging you for something that you deserve, whether it's because of this lifetime or a previous one, you know, I will say never apologize for that. Never feel bad about that. If you are, if you happen to live a, a blessed and privileged life this lifetime, then good for fucking you. Good for you. You know, I, I, I don't, I, I just want you to reiterate, I just want to reiterate that just for a second. Do never, never apologize. Period. Just don't. Don't apologize for what you have. I don't give a damn if you are a trust fund baby. I don't care if you won the lotto. I don't care if you married into money. However you got your wealth, however you got your money, however you're walking into your wealth, some of you may not be there yet, but you know, however which way it comes to you um, or however which way the blessings, whatever blessings that is, because it may not even be money. It could be, it could be envious people mad because you have a shit ton of kids and they don't have kids. Like, I feel like you get a lot of envy for some reason. And it's usually coming from you having an abundance of something that they don't have and desire to have. And, and this guilt trip is what I'm trying to tell you to get off of. Um, there's no reason to feel guilty at all. If you want to do something to help in the name of just helping someone who's less fortunate than you in however way, whichever way that is, then great. If you don't want to do that, then fuck it. Fine. <laughs> like I just, this high horse thing is annoying. I'm done with this high horse, politically correct bullshit. Live your life. You know, as long as everyone is happy and consenting and no one's getting hurt, then I, whatever. I don't, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, that, that, that specific 
message was for somebody who's like, I know, I don't know why they don't like me. It's like, forget them. Forget them if they don't like you. Go find some people who do like you. Is, is, that, is that simple? It doesn't have to be difficult. Sometimes we are complicating our own journey because we're trying to fit in places we don't belong in. Feathers, messages, movement. Love this for you because as I'm saying, go find somewhere else that you belong in. Um, I'm seeing this and I'm like, people feel like you were, <laughs> I feel like you were trying to fit in places you're not supposed to be in. And people don't like that. People don't, people don't want you sitting at the table you're trying to sit at. And my question to you is now more of an internal thought process that you need to go on within yourself, which is, should you really be at that table? Should you really be breaking your neck trying to sit at this table? I'm going to drink for that. Hold on. Should you really be trying to, should you really be trying to fit in at other people's table when you're not, when you're not supposed to be there, when you're not welcome, you're not wanted, or should you be trying to uh, go spend time somewhere else where people actually appreciate, love, and care about you? I also see that as a message of, of um, freedom, freeing. Um, you can move however you want to move or people see you as being someone who's able to kind of just do what they want, move freely. Um, people see you as someone that doesn't really have a lot of obligations, isn't really required to, to do, you know, some people feel like they can't move because they are like essentially uh, like birds in cages. Like they're, they're limited. They can't go anywhere. Right. And it's like for you, um, they see you as not being a bird in a cage, but more or less someone, a bird who's out and able to just kind of go wherever they please. Freedom. Some, someone who has their freedom. I see kind and peace. I see kind and peace and it's like, although observant, off, you know, kind of secretive and kind of, you know, quiet. I see you being quiet as well. That hasn't came up in actual card form, but I'm sensing, you know, you're, you're probably quiet. You bite your tongue a lot, especially in new situations and new circumstances. Like I don't see you as being boisterous or out and about in the crowd. Um, but I do see you being someone who has a soft spot, um, for, uh, well, what is that soft spot? Hold on. For young people, for youth, for kids, maybe you, maybe you um, want to be in some sort of mentor capacity or just full fledged being a teacher of some sort. But I see you having a soft spot for kids, um, and uh, also, you know, um, someone who that I think people perceive you as being someone who's just really like chill. I, I feel like you, you, you're not one for nonsense bullshit and drama like I feel like that is not your vibe that is not something that people connect you a lot with and then we got four swords here I was like yeah people don't really connect you with someone who is about that life like you are not about to be on anyone's housewife show anytime soon okay like you you are like as soon as drama starts you probably head straight to um, the door you're like all right well this is my exit this is my cue to actually I'm gonna leave that out yeah, this is my cue to leave. I'm out. I and and so and then we have the hierophant here, and I once again kind of, I kind of see you guys as being um, someone that a lot of people feel like you know, not people. I really feel like it's it's younger people, but um, people like to. I think you're you're some sort of goal to people. I don't know how to explain that, but like. People look up to you, but not in a way of like a role model. I think people kind of like, they look at you and they be like, damn, I wish I could be that chill or damn, I wish I could be, you know, that bomb or, you know, like whatever it is that you have going. Like I said, I feel like some of you guys are kind of flashy a little bit. Again, nothing to, you know, nothing to feel any kind of way about it. I mean, shit, live it, get it how you live it, right? Is that how the saying goes? I don't think that, get it how, get it how you live? Yeah, I think that's it. But point is, it's like, you know, go ahead and fr floss your 
you know, Bottega heels and your Louis Vuitton bag, you know what I mean? And your, you know, $1,500, you know, lace front. <laughs> like, do it. Like, you know, I thought I saw something fly out of here. Maybe not. I know something fell down, but I thought I saw... Okay, maybe not. Well, if it's meant to be, it'll show itself. But we do have the uh, Ten of Pentacles. Live your best life. I feel like you have fans, like and like not fan, not fans in this in the sense of like, not fans in the sense of like you're a celebrity and you have people like staking out in front of your house and shit. But like I feel like people you have like low key fans, like like your coworkers are fans of yours. <laughs> and um, and so yeah, you're you're gonna get. I mean, you have seven of seven of wands here. You're gonna get some of that like hateration, but. Continue living your best life is what I say. All right. So that's your reading group one. If it hit, if it resonated in any in any way at any point, I say I'm grateful for that. Um, if you like this kind of reading or if you like any of the content I do here, because it kind of changes a little bit, or even if you just vibe with me <laughs> as a person, because I'm an acquired taste, uh, you know, then hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. And yeah, not me picking up the cards as I'm talking. <laughs> That's so rude. Anyway, I will see you guys in my next video, group one. All right. Bye, guys. What is going on, group number two? Welcome to your reading. I'm feeling very chill in this video for some reason. Like, I don't want to do anything crazy. I just want to, like, I just want to be, like, real chill with it. It's, like, way well past midnight. It's 1 o'clock in the morning now. So, we're, we're chill. Plus, I got to get up in the morning and um, trade. So, I'm not trying to do nothing crazy today. So, <laughs> I mean, like, as far as, like... <laughs> making it look a certain way like we're just gonna pull cards so like I said we're featuring the um, hoodoo tarot deck which I'm very excited about group one's reading was really nice so I can't wait to see uh, for you guys how people perceive you so immediately we're coming out the gate with one thank you uh, let's do one or okay or or three cards cool that's fine that's fine I'll take it I'll show you, I'll show you. let's go let's see and I don't know if I mentioned in the intro, but I am going to be reading from the book so that I can, because like I said, I've never used this deck and I, I really want to just give you guys accurate uh, reading descriptions and also just any other interpretations that I'm sensing or picking up will we'll add on to that as well. Um, so we have the Eight of Knives first. So let's go there. Um... So I'm, I'm learning from group one that each card has a plant attached to it, an image description, and a meaning. So we're going to go through three of th all three of those. So the plant associated with the Eight of Knives is the star anise. Um, the image is of a man standing in the middle of a crossroads. He has two knives stuck in the ground at the entrance of each pathway. Crossroads are considered powerful places where physical and spiritual worlds, worlds meet. Ashe. Um, yeah, I'm not going to add anything to that. It's so funny because, like, as, a, as an actual, actual person who does root work, like, I just love this book so far. I just love it. Uh, but, yeah, physical and spiritual worlds meet. Crossroads is also a lot of times where you can. I'm just really quick. I will add something. Crossroads. Um, our ancestors, well, not our ancestors, because um, hoodoo is uh, derived from uh, those that would have been considered slaves. Uh, so descendants of those said slaves would be um, in the bloodline of potential and possible practitioners of this. So that's who I'm referring to when I say our ancestors. Uh, so, yeah, just to kind of get some context there, but like, I know my ancestors, those that, uh, you know, kind of did practice or, you know, this was part of their belief system and their spiritual practice. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that um, crossroads are where you would also go and leave offerings and also where you would go and leave 
um, the remains of any, you know, practices that you did, any workings that you did, basically, you would leave those there as well. Um, you would also leave offerings. I don't think I said offerings. I'm not sure if I said offerings, but you would leave offerings at crossroads for certain um, entities uh, in the name of them coming to aid or help you. Um, so it's kind of, it's almost like a drop, it's like a drop off sometimes. So, you know, if you've ever been at a crossroads, for example, something that looks like this, and you saw, for example, like, like some cakes or something, uh, don't touch it. I mean, unless you just need to, but like for real, don't touch it. <laughs> um, so anyway, the meaning here says, um, because these are all probably going to be done upright because I didn't shuffle them any specific kind of way or like random shuffle and flip them and I'll do all that crazy shit. I didn't do that. So they're more than likely going to be read upright, but they do have upright and, um, and, uh, like the, they call it the positive side and the negative side. So, uh, so this card says, uh, the positive, the meanings are believing in yourself again, empowered thinking, the removal of obstacles, escape from bondage, acquittal, being productive, a much needed release, ceasing to be your own worst en enemy, liberating oneself from a victim mentality, hmm. renewed hope and finding a way out of a predicament looks like it I feel like you guys come off like like a like a go-getter like a hustler like I think I think people kind of have a lot of respect for you that's what I'm feeling like like I feel like you have you're someone people perceive as like you know that started from the bottom now we're here Drake song yeah like that that feels like you and whether you gotten to the hear part of that song or not like I feel like people kind of look at you and kind of have a little bit of respect for you I feel like um People kind of look at you and they see that there has been a bit of a struggle for you. Uh, it's, it's, it's so funny, by the way, that these cards even would come out and and you picked sage because, you know, we sage when we're trying to when we're trying to clean and also when we're trying to open and invite in. Um, specific spirits. We use sage in almost everything. It's a cleansing and a, a welcoming. I mean, it's it's multifaceted, and I feel like you guys are are in that way. You're you're multifaceted. You're you're fascinate. I think I just created a word, but um, you're multifaceted, and um, I feel like you will make a way out of no way, and that's how people that's how people see you. Now we have the free man, which I'm not quite sure. Oh, is that supposed to be like the, um, the full card? It is. It's the full card. Wow. Okay. So the free man actually comes with a quote. And if you don't know, um, who do, um, technically is a mixture of Christian roots and native practices when it comes to the the being connected and grounded to the earth and using earth's herbs and um, things of this earth to aid in whatever it is that you are trying to bring forth into your life and into your reality reality and so because of that um, a lot of slaves used both Bible scripture and herbs um, congruently. So you'll see when it comes to um, hoodoo, uh, there are a lot of scriptures. And so, um, and this is me kind of not really reading through this book. So I really didn't even know that I do all major arcana. So it looks like all major arcana cards have an associated scripture. So that is very interesting. So the free man has the associated scripture, John 8, 3, uh, no, 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 <laughs> I'm in a church in a minute. Hold on. It says it's John 8, 32. So that's, that's how you say that. <laughs> so it says John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hmm. The plant associated with this card is Jiminson weed. I hope they don't like, uh, <laughs> delete this video because of that. I don't know. And the image is described as a man who's walking away from a tomb of Joshua John Ward of Georgetown County, South Carolina. 
Ward is the largest American slaveholder, dubbed the king of the rice planters. The man is carrying a mason jar filled with dirt. Who is this young man? Did he know Ward personally? Why did he risk being prosecuted for trespassing or witchcraft? Does he have a purpose at all? Or is this man just plain crazy? It says freedom. Is it a state of mind, a state of being, or is it both? The free man doesn't think about it anymore, any more than a fish contemplates water. The free man isn't deep because depth by definition prohibits restrict, unrestricted movement upon the surface. The free man was probably deep prior to the onset of his journey into the unknown and unfathomable and unpredictable, or he wouldn't have had the wisdom to know that the concept of safety is an illusion anyway. The free man has seen many people get beaten by life or in fact had had no life at all because they were afraid to take a few risks. He has heard many people say one day regarding their dreams and heard way too many say today's. That's not what that sentence says. Hold on. Something's crawling on my leg. Hold on. I hope it's not a spider. I got distracted because I felt like something was crawling on my leg and so I completely butchered that sentence. Let me read you the sentence the right way. He has heard many people say one day regarding their dreams and heard way too few todays. He has conversed with talented acquaintances that felt more comfortable dwelling on abstractions and distractions than investing in their potential. The free man is tired of being so deep, so calculating, so restricted and so dead. The meaning of this card is zero because no, the, <laughs> it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> the free man is card zero because zero is not a natural number since most people normally don't start counting with zero. Likewise, the free man doesn't count in situations that demand subservience to conventional wisdom or the status quo. The free man is on a whole other level because he genuinely feels that common sense is for common people. He doesn't think he's better than anyone. He has just accepted that new grass doesn't grow as lusciously on a beaten path. The free man is definitely foolish to most people who encounter him because he appears to be reckless and immature. But such assessments are only relevant when gain or loss is the focus. The free man doesn't exist in the space where those thoughts flourish. He is more interested in the attainment of wisdom by following his passions and what he knows to be true, wherever that may ultimately lead. The free man has every great root worker, no, the free man has what every great root worker has always had, the courage to follow their calling despite the possibly dire consequences and unshakable faith that made that courage possible. I just love this book. Um, so when it comes to if, if just basically if you're you know, you know still not following what this has to do with the reading. Um, the free man is coming out and it's saying people perceive you as being this. Um, this roaming spirit, you kind of go by the beat of your own drum. Um, you're not tied down to anything. Um, like I said, you're a hustler. And so you don't live life conventionally. You don't have a nine to five. Or if you do, then it's it's it's, it's probably, um, I'm not going to say if you do. Most of you guys probably don't. The ones that are perceiving this, I know this is a general reading, so it may not apply to you. But I feel like people kind of perceive you as just being a different person, a black sheep, essentially, someone who just doesn't really go with everyone else. You know, you don't if everyone if everyone's going left, you're ten, you tend to go right if you feel like you want to go right. And people kind of see you as just being this person who, like I said, marches to the beat of their own drum, does their own thing, lives by their own rules. And, you know, people kind of like, <laughs> like you're, you're just kind of like not with the crowd stuff. You don't really assimilate. You know, you, you, you always have kind of just done your own thing and live by your own code basically. Um, and seven of sticks, where are the sticks? I am having so much fun with this. Uh, oh, here we go. Seven of sticks. The plant is elderberry. If you guys know Sabi at all, you know Elderberry is all up and through his teachings. So the plant is Elderberry. 
The image is uh, as following. According to the legend, Uncle Monday was a witch doctor from Africa who was enslaved in South Carolina. He managed to escape and sought refuge among the Seminole. Um, that is, those are uh, American Indians, natives. Uncle Monday promised himself that he would never let whites capture him again, so he asked a Seminole medicine man to turn him into an alligator um, so as to always be able to defend himself. He is said to still roam the swamps in either his alligator or human form, blessing or cursing anyone who crosses his path. Okay, and so if you can see, it's a, it's a, it's a, a person, it's a, it's a being with the head of an alligator and a body of a man, and he is... Um, on guard against six other sticks. No, seven sticks. He's on guard against seven sticks. And um, the meaning behind this card is standing your ground, strength and adversity, defending your beliefs, the final showdown, a fair competition, protest, resisting authority, protecting what's rightfully yours, and the ability to summon inner strength. So to me, I, I I feel like you're someone who is not to, people don't really want to mess with you. Uh, people don't really want to challenge you because they know you're about that life. I feel like you will fight, not just like in belief, but like you will physically get down and dirty with the best of them um, to, to basically, um, you know, take what's rightfully yours and, and hold your ground. Like you have no problem holding your ground. You have no problem um, speaking out and speaking up for what you believe. I feel like you're not a troublemaker and you don't start trouble, but you will definitely finish it. You definitely give that vibe and people definitely sense that on you. And it's kind of like, you're not the one that people really just want to mess with. Um, but at the same time, like you won't back down from a challenge. You won't back down from a fight. You won't back down from uh, really an opportunity to show out and show up. Uh, I, I find you to be someone that people may think are, is just very feisty. Um, they may kind of think you're a loner in a sense, but you're not necessarily a loner. It's just you prefer to uh, go alone when you're doing um your your certain task um i feel like you kind of prioritize like there's a time and a place so there's a time to be social and be around friends and there's a time to be by yourself and working and head and head down shoulders you know squared and we work in right now and um that's kind of the overall vibe that i'm feeling for you so um now we're going to move into the other cards okay so for this deck we're asking those who pick group number two there. We're trying to find out how people perceive them, how they appear to other people. So anything from this deck that can provide some insight, clarity, and guidance in regards to that would be very much appreciated. So we have So we have pronghorn and it says now is the time to act. Opportunities are here. Move forward with confidence. Your talents will always your talents will always help you land on the pinnacle. Your quick wit and keen senses will lead you to success. That's a word for you and also a good indicator of how people see you as well. Um, and then flowers, uh, <laughs> flowers come out and it's so funny. So you're not someone that is easily, um, it's, it, 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 it takes you, you have a shell, you have an outer shell, an outer layer, right? And you're not the warm person that people just kind of want to come up to. Babies don't see you and run across the street to come hug you. You're not that kind of person. You don't give that vibe to people. You kind of give this vibe of like, you know, um, maybe don't waste his time or maybe don't waste her time, you know, um, you're, I, I, for some reason, am feeling very like Earth's, like, a, like a Capricorn. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling Aquarius. I'm feeling maybe like, maybe Sagittarius. 
maybe Sagittarius, maybe Aries. I don't know why those four are coming up, but that's what I'm feeling for you guys. <laughs> but like, I feel like you guys are just like, let's go, let's go. I don't have time. Let's go. What are we doing? It needs to make sense. Um, is it, are we, are we, and you, you don't like a lot of gray area. Like, it's like, let's, let's do this. Let's do this now. Let's, let's, you know, write it down. What are we doing? And then let's go. Like, you don't like to kind of linger around. You don't like to beat around the bush. You seem very like, di excuse me. You seem very direct, very straightforward. Um, I don't know if you, <laughs> I don't, for some reason I'm not getting the friendly vibes. In fact, the fact that flowers came out makes me feel like you are, um, you're, you maybe prefer to, you know, not have a lot of friends. Like, I'm not saying you don't have friends, but I feel like your, your circle is very small, very tight. Um, and, or people feel that like, people feel like they are like, people feel like you're not, um, necessarily a person that, um, is open to new relationships at any point in time. Um, I do the best I can. And I praise the goddess and the God. I think that you're someone who has a natural respect. Uh, I feel like you're someone who's, uh, I don't know how to say this. Uh, I feel like you're, you're very connected to your, um, feminine and masculine energies. I'll say it like that. And I feel like you, um, work well with both. Um, it's, it, I don't know. For some reason, I'm also kind of feeling like for someone out there that's maybe watching this or stumbles across this in the future, um, you're androgynous, not androgynous. That's not the word. It's one o'clock in the morning. It's one o'clock in the morning. And y'all are going to be like, well, why would you read at one o'clock then if you can't leave me alone? <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I feel like you guys kind of, there's a quality about yourself that is good for both mascul masculine and feminine energy. And you guys, uh, you guys are really good at playing both parts. You guys are good at utilizing both parts. Like I said, you're a hustler and, um, I kind of feel like you're just really good at, oh shit, cards exploded. Hold on. them all up. Um, I don't know. Something just tells me that you're really good at being who you need to be in that moment. I'll say it like that. That's, that's just enough. That's vague enough, but just enough information. Um, <laughs> you do the best you can. As I said, this just reiterates to me how much of a hustler you are, how much of a go-getter you are. Um, you kind of take life by the head. Ace of Wands is giving me also the same energy we, we read about with the free man, um, where when an opportunity presents itself, you definitely don't like to sit and wait on your hands. You like to go ahead and take action. Um, I think I think you're someone who has um, acquired the things that you have acquired. You're, you're proud of but You're also very protective of. And that's that probably why there's an outer, outer shell um, when it comes to people coming in. You're kind of like, uh, no, I don't know. You stay back. Uh, we can talk from, you know, this line. I just drew like don't cross this line because you need to assess people. You don't like people all in your space. You don't like people all in your you probably don't like people in your face at all. Uh, you, you also don't seem very approachable. <laughs> I'm going to say that you don't seem very approachable, but I will say with that queen of cups there, um, I feel like you are, um, like a softy in the inside. I don't know why I feel like that, but I feel like some of you guys, like, it's like this, uh, what is that? Oh, yeah. You're, you're, a, you are a big softy. You, you are hope, like not hopeful, but like, um, I feel like you're just kind of waiting for the right person to, to kind of just overwhelm with love. But until then you keep yourself guarded. And I feel like people don't, people may not necessarily see this because they are seeing so much of the struggle. It's like when people only see the struggle, they only see the hard exterior. They never get to know the the teddy bear inside or you know they never get to know the 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 soft one the soft you know like it's like it's like you've ever seen those movies where like the 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 female in the in the clip is like super masculine she's like tomb raider vibe she's like 
you know, well, Tomb Raider wasn't the most masculine, but I'm just saying, like, she's very, like, you know, cargo pants and <laughs> just kicking ass, taking names type of stuff. And then in a next scene, she's in, like, this, like, cocktail dress, heels, bun, bun in the back of her head, and she's all dolled up, and the guy's like, oh, damn, like, I didn't even know, like, you, you clean up well. Like, you know, one of those moments, like, I feel like that's you. I feel like it's you. That's what I mean when I said the, you know, I praise the goddess and God. I feel like you do that. Like, that's you. You, Angelina Jolie all the way, okay? And every movie Angelina has ever played in, okay? That's you. And um, I feel like people don't really get to see the dolled up side, though, because you're so much in survival mode. So, yeah. I hope this reading gave you some insight, clarity, and guidance to how people see you, how people how people perceive you. I hope that the information that was given here is um, helpful for you in your own reflection journey so that you can kind of either, you know, use this information to maybe change the things that you didn't necessarily like but resonated or um, use this information to your benefit, <laughs> however that is, uh, however you use that. Uh, you could do it both ways, you know, whatever. Uh, if you like this reading or any type of readings that I do here on this channel, or if you just vibe with me as a person, then um, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads I do. Whenever I do them, I do a lot. What is going on at group number three? I am here to give you your reading. Um, today is a different day, so if I'm a lot louder and happier, it's because it is not midnight and I am fed. So uh, <laughs> you get all of this energy for your reading. Um, we are here again, like I said in the intro, to discuss um, how you appear to other people, um, what is the vibe you're giving off, and of course, like I said in the intro, we are featuring the Hoodoo Tarot deck, which has been dropping gems for the other two groups, so I'm very interested to see what comes up for you guys. So let's just go ahead and start with um, this deck and figure out, okay, immediately, and that's the first card that actually is coming in reverse let me see if there's any other cards that need to also come out and then are there any other cards in, okay all right ashe ashe so I'm reading out of I'm reading out of the guidebook uh, because this is a new deck. I mean, I explained all this to you guys in the intro. It's a same video for you, but it's a different day for me. So I'm trying to remember what I said and what I didn't say. So um, we have the five of baskets. We have the seven of sticks. We have the eight of knives and we have the ace of baskets. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start reading. So we're going to go into five of baskets first which I just passed. Okay. And one of the things that I noticed from group one and group two's reading, which is obviously going to be the same for you, but one of the things I noticed was each card has an associated plant. Um, and also I noticed that, and you guys don't have a major here, but the major arcanas have an associated um, scripture. So I think that is really cool. Um, and I explained in, I think, group two that um, scripture is a common practice in um, hoodoo. So uh, I just I just love that she uh, incorporated a lot of uh, authentic uh, practices and it's not just like fluff. So yeah, shout out to her for that, her meaning uh, Tatiana, uh, the author of this. So Five of Baskets, um, the plan associated with this card is St. John's work. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, sorry, I'm good. St. John's work. The image shows three baskets uh, that are shown in various states of destruction. Two remain unscathed beneath uh, debris, despite being bent on, um, bent or distorted. Jesus Christ, these words. <laughs> despite being bent or distorted, the two baskets that survive would ever destroy the other three. Um, represent our often untapped inner power and strength. I promise you guys I can read. Um, <laughs> so, 
because this card came in um, reverse, we're going to read the negative meaning. Um, so the negative meaning is uh, brooding, mourning, loss, resentment, unwelcome change, feel feelings of abandonment, failure, separation, punishment, pessimism, bitterness, remorse, heartbreaking situations, and traumatic experiences. Um and so, of course, when it comes to this reading and how people are perceiving you, um, people could be perceiving you um, in a little bit of a negative way when it comes to uh, potential um, home life. Uh, so this could be actually like your family uh, that perceives you um, as a, you know, maybe a negative Nancy, maybe a Debbie Downer, maybe just like like the book actually said, a pessimist, um, someone who just kind of has a general negative outlook on life. A lot of times this is because of things that have continuously happened in your reality and your experience that have, you know, made you feel this disdain um, towards, you know, hope and, you know, this belief that things are going to work out when you um, kind of maybe feel naturally that, you know, it just makes more sense to prepare yourself for the worst or to just accept the fact that, you know, it may not work out or will not work out or super hard or whatever. You know, I feel like however which way you uh, justify how you come across or even when you're venting or when you're frustrated, however it is that you're doing that, um, whoever it is that you're doing it to, they're, they're reading that as um, you being pessimistic, you being um, just negative. And I feel like you're probably someone who vents to family a lot um, or family members or people that you look at as family. You're not someone that necessarily bottles it in, but maybe you're more vocal to your family about like your financial struggles or, you know, and, and maybe they kind of feel a little bit like you're doing this whole woe is me. Everybody feels sorry for me. Um, so again, I'm only saying these things because if it's something that you don't want them to perceive you as, and it's something that does kind of resonate or make sense, then it can be something that you can use as part of your self-awareness journey to kind of maybe change or, or, um, adjust essentially. Uh, so now we have seven of sticks, which was actually the same card that was drawn for group two, I believe. Um, where are the sticks? Oh, here they are. Seven of Sticks, the plant associated with this uh, card is elderberry. Um, the image is, uh, according to a legend, um, Uncle Monday, which is who this person would be. Uncle Monday was a, um, was a witch doctor from Africa who was enslaved in South Carolina. He managed to escape and sought refuge among the Seminole. The Seminole were a, um, a, a tribe of native uh, uh, Americans, basically, people who were native to this land. <clears throat> um, Uncle Monday promised himself that he would never let whites capture him again so he asked a Seminole medicine man to turn him into an alligator so as to always be able to defend himself he is said to still roam the swamps in either his alligator or human form blessing it or cursing uh, anyone who crosses his path this is an upright position so the associated words are standing your ground strength and adversity defending your beliefs final showdown fair competition protest resisting authority protecting what's rightfully yours and the ability to summon inner strength um, and I feel like this card is coming in and, and saying that you know uh, even though you kind of maybe do feel you do come off a little uh, pessimistic for some of you guys um, a lot of people also perceive you as being very strong strong-willed strong-minded um, a force to be reckoned with um, you are someone who does not back down or cower down when it comes to a challenge or someone maybe coming at you, coming at your beliefs, coming at your morals, values. Um, for some reason, I'm also feeling loyalty with this card for some, and this wasn't something that I said in group two, but for you guys, I'm sensing loyalty. I'm hearing that word, like you're very loyal. People see you as being a very loyal person. Eight of knives. You know what, I'm going to do Ace of Baskets first because I'm already at this page. Ace of Baskets, uh, the plant is wild lettuce. The image shows a basket overflowing with waters um, that sits atop a lodestone. Um, lodestones are used in hoodoo to attract love and prosperity. The meaning behind this card is compassion, emotional renewal, having a sense of peace, falling in love, conception, new relationships, happiness, messages and water, abundance, empaths, uh, intuition, feeling refreshed, spirituality, spiritual people, um, and healing old wounds. Um, so... 
that's interesting. One, because um, this card, like like the what it said with the image description that um, lodestones are um, attract love and prosperity. I feel that with this card. One, I want to say um, you appear to, to you you appear to other people as very attractive. Um, I feel like people people consider you to be a very attractive, physically tr attractive person. Um, you um, kind of maybe are. Uh, someone that people like to look at and watch. They may not necessarily come up to you, but they do like to look at you. I think that you are uh, kind of someone that has no problems getting attention um, <laughs> and it, no problems like taking the floor um, or, you know, like in your romantic life even. I feel like uh, you... If you're single, it's probably because you're like choosing to be single. You know, you, you have no problem having suitors or people that, you know, want to pursue you or want you to pursue them, um, depending on how you work and how you flow. Uh, and then we have the Eight of Knives. And this card was also a repeat card from group two. I know group one, one of those. Uh, the plan associated with that card is star anise. The image is of a man standing in the middle of the crossroads with two knives stuck in the ground at the entrance of each pathway. Crossroads are considered powerful uh, places where the physical and spiritual worlds meet. Actually, I think this was group one's reading because I was explaining to them, um, and I said in the intro, I don't really call myself a practitioner. Uh, but for the sake of language, <laughs> um, as far as like communicating with you guys, we'll just say I'm a practitioner. We'll just say that for shits and giggles, right? So as a practitioner of hoodoo, and someone who's very versed in it, um, I will say that um, crossroads are extremely important and super uh, symbolic. Um, a lot of times, um, you can't. You will actually, um, depending on who it is that you are um, working with when it comes to entities or deities um, or spirits, you will actually leave a lot of things, your workings or even your offerings at Crossroads. Um, and so um, Crossroads really do kind of symbolize uh, uh, the opening of paths, for example. Um, and this isn't even just in Hoodoo. Uh, crossroads are super important even in Vodou. And I'm sure in other um, traditional uh, African traditional religions or ATRs, like crossroads, I think across the board um, for at least my ancestors and other people like me's ancestors are just extremely important and traditional. And I just want to say, because I said this in group one, but if you can help it, if you ever come across a crossroads or a, a like, and this would not necessarily be probably in the city but in the outskirts if you ever see like offering like foods like cakes and stuff um maybe don't eat them <laughs> or if you ever see someone's like discarded spiritual work don't mess with it just leave it alone leave it alone you know um as a spiritual practitioner i'm just telling not spiritual practitioner i'm spiritual but i do practice those are two different things but as a practitioner um i i think it's important to just kind of for those of you guys who don't know who are sensitive to those things um you never know what you're bringing into your reality or even into your household when you go and take discarded um workings home so i'll just say it like that so that was Miss Voodoo Tarot for you guys. And we're going to go ahead and go right into Oracle now for uh, you guys. So group three, uh, Spirit, we're asking for, I'm not going to take that. We're asking uh, for this group to uh, pull out any cards in this deck that, we can, that can provide any insight, clarity, or guidance into how other people uh, perceive them. Thank you. Elk, nobility. I'm going to read the description and then I'm going to talk about it. So it says, celebrate your accomplishments with harmony. That's not what it says. It says, celebrate your accomplishments with humility. <laughs> you are crowned with success. Powerful forces guide you. Your ability to conquer challenges is limited, limitless. And uh, this this card is so appropriate because we, we talked about you being strong-willed. And I feel like people, people see you as being like a, a solid person. I feel like you're a person who says what they mean and means what they say. You're not finicky. You're not a pushover. You're not 
weak or or um, I feel like you kind of also exude confidence like I feel like people look at you and they're like yeah I'm not gonna really kind of fool with that person for real for real because you know they you just you exude power um, even when you don't mean to and so like I said like how you appear may not necessarily be what you're feeling at every given moment but just your essence and aura sometimes that speaks for us um, and that is definitely a tool and an asset that you can be using um, especially when it comes to maneuvering um, relationships especially when it comes to maneuvering um, in the world of a career and building relationships on a business front um, is is using that and using that uh, like using this this elk energy to command authority into rooms that that are that you're needed to 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 leave imprints on people as far as like people wanting to really work with you it's like people want to work with someone who they deem to be powerful so use that to your advantage is what i would say what else about uh group three from um this this uh deck please What else in this deck for group three? How do people perceive these uh, these people, those that pick this group? How do people perceive them? It's like a card wants to jump out. And then three came out. We have runes, aura, and geomancy. Um, you give off a, a how do, what word do I use? Sentient energy. You give off a otherworldly energy. You give off an energy like you know a lot. Um, you give off an energy of of being. Um, yeah, I would say like you know a lot. Like you're smart. Like you're intelligent. Like you're well studied, well versed. Like you read books. <laughs> you know, like you 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 took time out to learn some things. You know, um, I feel like for you. A lot of people may kind of consider you to be like a teacher in some ways, like like everything. Everything is a teaching moment. I feel like for you guys, like um, yeah, I don't know. I keep, I just keep hearing teacher, like teacher. I keep hearing um, and not teacher in a traditional sense. I just feel like you could be having a regular conversation with somebody and they just literally just be like, oh, okay, you're about to like drop some gems on me. You're about to drop some bombs. Um, I think that you also kind of give off a, um, hmm. You remember that? Well, you probably don't, but I don't know. Well, the movie was actually quite popular. You remember that movie, um, Equalizer with Denzel Washington? That's y'all. Y'all are y'all are Denzel in that movie. That's what I that's what I'm feeling. It's, you remember in the movie if you've seen it. Actually, I'm gonna keep that. No, I'm not gonna keep that. If you remember in that movie, um, he comes off as like this quiet, you know, person in the diner who is minding his business. You know, uh, probably can't defend himself. Like you know, just someone that you would easily overlook. As like I said, you guys are big and strong, right? But I do feel like you guys don't lead with that. Um, and you guys are attractive, but again, I don't feel like you guys lead with that. You could, but you don't. Um, yeah, you guys kind of feel like someone that like maybe prefers to not be in the in the spotlight so much, so that you can take the time to observe everything around you. And um, I feel like when it's time to show up, though, like you basically hand out a can of wabas, and not in the actual literal you know sense of the word but um in the sense of like you can you can show yourself you can show up when need be you just maybe don't feel like you have to and people kind of look at you as you know they people i feel like people kind of get a a false uh understanding of who you are initially because um with you you have layers 
You know, like you're not this mean person. People see you as a kind person or kind hearted. People who know you see you as kind hearted. Um, people kind of see you as someone who is practical, who is a realist, um, who kind of has a tone of pessimism. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's still kind of like you're a solid person. Like you're a, you're a, you're a solid A1 person. I also am getting the word dependable. Like you're a person of your word. You don't really make a lot of promises, but when you do, um, you follow them. So it's there's kind of an integrity there. I said loyal uh, uh, earlier, but I'm hearing that word still kind of repeating in my in my head. It's like loyalty, loyalty. Like you're very loyal. You you respect loyal, not respect loyalty, but you expect loyalty across the board as well. Anything else for this group? Anything else for this group? Um, super random, super random, but things are about to turn around for you. Things are about to turn around for you. Options are, are coming. Openings are coming. Doors are opening. And this feeling of this feeling of like discontentment. Yeah. This feeling of discontentment is 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 wrapping up. And I feel like you're about to you're about to take off. Now, this has nothing to do with what the video is about, but I do want to point this message out cuz someone needs to hear it. Um some of you guys uh, are about to start losing some shit. Um, but it's in the name of everything that you want to gain in this life. So people are going to walk away and they're supposed to. Um, things that you have been kind of burdening yourself with as far as like obligations and the maybe maybe just the the weight of obligations is about to go away and there's a lot to look forward to basically there's a there's a lot of abundance to look forward to and I think really what this is kind of saying is that pretty soon you'll be able to physically live that abundance that you've been wanting to live you got King of Pence here. And I look at that card as not necessarily someone who's loaded um, financially, but I look at this card as someone who is abundant in the, th in the ways that they wish to be, and they're happy, and they're content, and they're at peace, and they, they're in control, and they're, they're where they're, they're, they are where they need to be. You know, things are stable financially. Things are stable. Which is interesting because we had five of baskets in reverse earlier.
And now we're ending the reading. That was the first card. And now we're ending the reading with King of Pentacles, which is basically things are about to wrap up for you. And people are going to be able to see the journey. You have a, you have a true testimony on your hands, group three. Some of you guys do at least. I'm going to pull maybe a couple more cards. So much love and abundance. So we have the Ace of Cups, which is likened to the Ace of Baskets. So we have that energy repeating itself. And then we have the Ten of Cups here, which is just overall general outside fulfillment and happiness things working out like i said you're about to experience a shift someone needed to hear that so um ashe for you and ashe for anyone who receives this message ashe to anyone who resonates with what anything i said at any point in this reading if you like this kind of reading or you like the other videos i do or you just vibe with me as a person then hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos or content and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything new uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign out, but I will see you guys, group three, in my next video. Okay, bye guys.